Hi, my name is Ray Sandoval and I'm the event chairman for the Kiwanis Club of Santa Fe for the burning of Zozobra. So Zozobra is actually Santa Fe's original Burning Man. This year Zozobra turns 92 and it was the creation of Will Schuster who was a local artist uh, who decided he wanted to have an event that would bring the entire community together. And what better way than to burn something uh, in the town square and uh, the tradition has continued to evolve and to grow and today uh, we see about 50,000 people that come from all over the world uh, to symbolically burn their gloom away. Traditionally what we had done is put gloom boxes around town and basically people could go and, and write down what was bothering them. Um, but since about 2013 we've had what we call Zozo Fest, which is an opportunity for the public to come and see Zozobra a week before uh, his burning and they can actually walk through all the art that the city produces. There's crayon drawings of Zozobra, there's sculptures, there's necklaces, there's almost everything you can possibly imagine. You know, Santa Fe being a great place for art, uh, Zozobra becomes one of the most um, important subjects. And so we thought we would dedicate an entire weekend to Zozobra art. And as you mingle your way through these uh, exhibits, the last thing you see is actually Zozobra himself. And that was something that was really important to us, which was to marry the idea of a Zozobra art show with the biggest piece of, Z of Santa Fe folk art, which is Zozobra himself. And one of the benefits of coming to Zozo Fest is that um, we have slips of paper and you can actually sit down and write your gloom and you can actually stuff it into Zozobra himself. And I'll tell you that the first time that we offered this to the public, I really didn't understand how serious people would take this. But people would go and tear off the piece of paper and get a pen and go into a corner and just write. And I mean, sometimes people would write a lot. And then what was funny is that they would then fold the piece of paper and almost as if it were something sacred like a ballot, they would walk up and they would look around and see who was watching them. They would put it in Zozobra's chicken wire frame and then they would actually pick up the frame and shake it to make sure that that gloom wasn't gonna fall off. And so we began to understand that this was something that was really important to people. And we think that that's part of the magic of this event. And that is, is that even though you're with 50,000 of your closest friends, this is something that's very personal to you because each one of us has something that we would like to symbolically leave in the past. And so while you're having this amazing communal experience, at the same time, you're having a very, very personal experience. And that's the magic of Zozobra. What you'll see back here is this dark brown model uh, is actually the original Schuster model. And uh, Schuster uh, really talks about this in his diary that it was very difficult to figure out how you would make the shape of a human head out of boxes, basically. These frames that make boxes and then you use wire to sculpt them together. And then a lot of it has to do with the artist that's making the head. But as you can see, he started out um, back in the 1930s and Zozobra's earless at that time. Uh, the arms look a little uh, thin, if you will. And Zozobra has completely evolved into this, this model here, which was probably about used from the 1960s to the 1970s. This was made by Dust Denninger. At that time, you can see that Zozobra now has a frame for his nose. He has uh, ears that have now appeared and that we've tightened up kind of that idea of what should look like a face and the jaw was re-engineered so that way it would actually work a little bit better. An interesting thing about the Schuster model was that Schuster didn't have blueprints. What he actually did was he would take a ruler and his model was to scale. And so every year he would take that, that ruler out and they would know to cut that piece of wood by what the ruler said. And when, Dust Gen when uh, Gus Denninger got involved, he was really the first blueprinter of Zozobra. He actually wrote it down on a piece of paper and measured it out and really started it. And we've continued that tradition with um, our new construction crew, Matt Horowitz and Jacob Romero. And you can see that this is now what Zozobra looks like. And his arms are much beefier. Uh, the belly box is much sturdier, so that way it doesn't break uh, when we're uh, hoisting him up. And you can see that the head is much more intricate. And so Zozobra has evolved just uh, throughout the years. The Decades Project was something that we wanted to do to have a lot of fun with Zozobra. As we are marching to Zozobra's 100th birthday in 2024, we thought that the most appropriate thing would go back to take a look at Zozobra's evolution and how he looked and how he changed through the decades. 
The other thing that was a huge component to this is that the Kiwanis Club of Santa Fe is all about young kids. And so this was an opportunity to teach ourselves not only about Santa Fe history, but what was going on in the world. And so we started out with the 1920s and Zazobra sported a handlebar mustache and we had 20s entertainment. Uh, last year was the 30s and Zazobra for the first time since the 1930s appeared with a bald head and was very, very overweight. And uh, Schuster used to like to uh, say that the 1930s was because of the fact there was so much gloom with the depression and World War II starting that Zazobra kind of gobbled up all of that. And then, uh, and then Schuster had kind of this realization that his monster had gotten a little bit away from the monster-ish and looking bald and fat that nobody was going to be afraid of him. And so he has this resurgence in the 1940s and the 1950s where Zizobra becomes very, very trim. Uh, he has a full head of hair and he becomes much more goblin-like. And so he wanted people to be afraid of him. Um, and we've tried to duplicate that. And so this year will be the 1940s, which gives us an opportunity to do uh, something that we're very excited about. Uh, Zazobra will be uh, sporting a hat for the very, very first time ever. Um, he'll also be uh, dressed in a 1940s fashion, which is something that Schuster had talked about in his diary, but never accomplished. So we hope to bring that to life. And then the other part of this is to have an element of World War II and talk about the seriousness of what was going on in the world. And because of that, we will be partnering with our Jewish community um, to have a Holocaust memorial the day before we burn Zizobra, which is September 1st. Um, and we will, uh, we will commemorate all the victims that were lost and kind of look inward and hopefully have a teachable moment with our kids to understand that that's, that kind of bullying, that, that kind of prejudice, that kind of division just ha has no place in a civilized world and hopefully that will never happen again. The 92nd annual burning of Zizobra will take place on Friday, September 2nd, which is the labor of Friday of Labor Day. It'll be the 92nd burning. For the first time in Zizobra's history, we're going to be allowing premier seating, uh, which is off to the stage uh, right, and it will allow people to be just a few hundred feet away from Zizobra. So uh, if you don't like loud noises and you don't like to feel that, that heat, you might want to stay away from that premium seating because you will definitely be in the thick of it. Uh, our Ticket sales have already hit a record for the last three days that they've been on sale. We've seen people from all over the world, so we're really excited to welcome them. But again, uh, this, is a, this is a tradition that belongs to all of us as human beings, and it really gets back to that central point of how do we leave that certain thing in the past and begin anew.